Hello, and welcome to episode 42 of Sir Astro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the MHD-19 medical droid from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. My aim with the MHD-19 is to create interest through the use of moody environmental lighting inspired by the amazing artwork. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the droid in black, followed with some zenithal highlights using grey and white. I'm then going to wet blend the base colours on using three different semi-metallic tones, followed with a simple shade for the entire model. I'll then be applying some quite extreme highlights to create the impression of some directional orange light and a high contrast metallic look. Our finishing touches will include glazing on some turquoise tones and providing a scenic base. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by mixing my mid-tone base colour, which I'm creating with some lead belcher mixed with some sybarite green and some dark sea blue. And because I'm going to be doing some wet blending, I'm going to mix in a little glaze medium to help keep the paint wet for longer. For the darker areas, I'm going to use an equal mix of lead belcher, black and dark sea blue. And for the brighter spots, I'll be using some Stormhost Silver mixed with a little Screaming Skull and some Thunderhawk Blue. You don't need to follow these colours exactly, of course. The main thing is that I want to achieve a semi-metallic finish with adequate contrast and some subtle blue-green tones. I'm also preparing some white, which I'll be mixing into the highlights in a while. I'm now going to work one section at a time, blocking in the base colours along with the main areas of light and shade. I'm starting with the pelvis and waist area, and I'm applying the darkest tone first. I'm now switching to the mid-tone, and I'm placing this at the top of the main area of plating. And with a clean brush, I'm blending the tones together with a few strokes along the border. I'm now moving on to the chest. and I'm using the brighter tone for the tops of the shoulders. Next I'm painting the legs and arms, and you'll notice I'm working in quite a fast and loose manner. We'll be applying a heavy shade and some more detailed highlights later on, so all we're looking for at this stage is to establish the main colour and create an initial impression of light and shade. And I'm now painting the head. I'm placing the eye area in shadow to allow the glowing reflections I'll be applying later on to better stand out.
The blending here doesn't have to be especially smooth, as we'll be stippling on some more extreme highlights in a while. Once done, we can now shade the entire figure, and I'm using quite a strong mix of four parts non-oil, with one part each of Celia Green Shade and Drakenhof Nightshade. After the initial application, I'm brushing some of the shade away from the areas we want to be brightest, such as the top of the head and the shoulders. We're now ready to add some highlights. I'm now going to apply two sets of highlights, the first of which is going to create the impression of orange light emanating from the right side of the droid. To do this, I'll be returning to my mid-tone base colour and mixing in a roughly equal amount of Troll Slayer Orange. I'm then going to use this to place highlights along the edges and surfaces that seem like they would catch the most light coming from the imagined light source. We can thin the paint down for surfaces like the chest, which are at an angle to the light source, so as to create the impression of a more diffuse spread of light. Whereas we can apply the paint more thickly to the sharper edges that we can imagine would catch the most light. Once the initial highlights have been placed, we can build the intensity by mixing in additional Troll Slayer Orange. You'll notice I'm regularly rotating the miniature to check the balance and consistency of the highlights. I'm now using pure Troll Slayer Orange. The intensity of the highlights will depend on how dramatic you want the effect to be, as well as the kind of material we're trying to emulate. Because metal is quite reflective, I'm going to be pushing these highlights a lot further than I would if I were painting, say, cloth or fur. I'm now going to take things further still by mixing in some Uriel Yellow, and my highlights are getting smaller as I do so. And for my brightest highlights, I'm going to mix in a little white. Here I'm applying just a few small specular glints.
and we may as well paint the eyes with the same tones. I'm now returning to the lighter of my base tones to begin adding highlights to the rest of the droid. Here on the head I'm reworking some of my base tones to push the contrast further. With much of these highlights I'm stippling the paint on to create a more noisy texture. This is quite a fun and forgiving way to work as we don't need to worry about achieving an especially smooth finish. I'm now boosting the highlights further with the addition of some white in a couple of stages. and I'm adding a few final spots of pure white. We can also use this to add some reflective glints to the eyes.
We're now ready to add some finishing touches. The first thing I'd like to do is introduce some more blue-green tones into the bodywork. To do that, I'm going to glaze on some thinned ink-tense green and blue inks by scale colour. This could also be done with Citadel glazes using Waywatcher Green and Gwilliman Blue. Here I'm thinning down a single drop of the green ink with around four large brushes of water. And I'm then introducing just a small amount of the blue. This can then be brushed over the bodywork. Even when thinned, the ink is still quite intense, so it's important to avoid letting it pool. I like the way these bluish tones play against the orange highlights, which I'm taking care to avoid. We can build the intensity in the shadows with two or three layers. I'm now going to paint the detailing on the chest, starting with a base mix of Nagaroth Knight and Macridge Blue. I'm then building the brightness up, firstly with some pure Macridge Blue. And then some Calgar Blue. I'm then lightening this with some white. And finally I'm going to glaze over this with the blue ink. Next I'm going to add a few oily stains with some typhus corrosion, to which I'm going to mix in a little Drakenhof nightshade, just to push the tone a little more towards blue. I'm now going to protect the miniature with a spray of matte varnish. And after rebasing the figure as detailed in episode 10, I'm going to apply some of the orange light effect to the surrounding floor. And this completes MHD 19. Thank you as always for watching. If you're enjoying the videos then do please let me know by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. You can also connect with me via my website and social media accounts which you can find links to in the video description below.
My very special thanks go to the wonderful patrons who are financing this series. I simply couldn't do this without their help. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!